Hello, everybody. Welcome to Rob's Gaming Table. I'm Rob. I'm Mel. And we're going to give our final thoughts slash review on the Lord of the the Lord of the Rings revised corset, which we just got finished through playing the campaign live on stream. If you're looking for that campaign, it's linked down in the video description. Uh, so we're going to talk here for hopefully like 10 minutes, go over our thoughts. We got some notes. Uh, as it's kind of fresh in our head, we just finished playing it. We do plan on continuing the campaign after this into the Dark of Mirkwood expansion uh, to play scenarios four and five of the extended revised corset campaign. Uh, so again, if you're looking for that playlist link down in the video description, so you can check out those episodes. Uh, all right. Uh, so uh, let's talk a bit about the improvements and changes to the revised corset. Okay. There's more tokens, more denominations. Okay. Nothing exciting, but it's there and it supports four players. So you can have less of a mess on the table, having threes and fives of your travel tokens and all that kind of stuff. Um, but again, if you replace your tokens, it doesn't really matter. Card storage, uh, the box actually comes with some real card storage. Okay, that is different. That is a huge thing. So if you were talking about the value of this core set, uh, comparing to the old core set, do not forget, you don't technically need to buy storage right away for this one, which the regular core set, you are out of luck. You have to spend some extra money buying deck boxes, um, some kind of storage to store your cards in, binders, uh, card boxes. Yes, some of that's not expensive, but the fact that they give you something, you have to put that into the cost. That's a nice touch. I do appreciate that. On uh, a more durable box, you're not going to just toss away, um, which is nice. I do appreciate that. Uh, also, we get the new learn to play and rules reference, if you can pass those over, uh, which is huge. These are huge things. I love when Fantasy Flight Games started doing this in the mid 20. 10s or whatever, sometime 2014, 2015, I think. Uh, so you have a learn to play, redone, reorganized. I love it. Clean, gets you into play, gives you the rules you need to get into started playing. Uh, and then any of the more complex rules are right here in print. You can read those, look things up as you play. It's great. Uh, all the timing windows, the more advanced stuff when you get there, all included. Great. The original rule book, which I do have here, uh, you know, it's not as cool. It tries to mash together a bit of both of those things. But can be a little convoluted, but still okay. It's fine. But it's the way they used to do rule books, which isn't as good. Not even close. Um, so you get an improvement there. And you also don't have to like search online and print stuff off like I used to. Look at this. From when we used to play 2014 FAQ version 1.6. Obviously, I printed this on my color printer, not my works color printer, I swear. <laughs> uh, so this is what I used to have to do is print this stuff out. Uh, you still do for the FAQ, but the rules reference was also an online thing. Uh, for a while there. Uh, now you get it in the box, which is sweet. So much appreciated. Um, getting the nice rule book. Uh, that's sweet. Uh, what else? We got new card quantity for four players. So enough cards to play with four players, kind of like a sample cards. You have 40 card, 40 card decks playing mono, uh, sphere decks for four players, but you get one full play set enough for one player to not have to buy a second course and get cards. And Mel, what do you think with the two-player support from what we what we saw in the decks we played and that kind of stuff? Uh, it's definitely nice to be able to have three copies of a card in my deck and three copies of a card in your deck, which or, is or two in mine, or, one in yours, yeah. and stuff like that. If yeah. we if we have the same color heroes, like the same uh, spheres. Yeah, definitely nice in certain situations for sure. Yeah, it made it made it feel like you don't need to buy a second core set. Like even with two players, I felt like it supported it more, kind of like Marvel Champions and Arkham Horror core mm -hmm. sets did. Um, it's just nice to have those three copies of cards so you can split cards up. You have eight copies of Gandalf, so you don't need to hunt down extra core sets for that. Yeah. That's you have nice. three copies of cards, you probably wouldn't even ever put three copies of cards in the deck, but it's nice just to have them. So if you're building for more players, it, it takes longer before having to buy more core sets to support like, you know, extra players if you're building for them. But if you have extra players, you know, and they go buy a core set, they have a full set for themselves so they can build from all the cards they want. So that, that's a nice improvement. I think it definitely helps with the difficulty curve that you have more cards to build and make better decks with, as we just saw from playing the third scenario there. Uh, it's actually, I think, more beatable than if you're just playing the original core set, which had like a lot of one ofs. I think it's almost impossible to beat that last scenario without some luck in the original core set, just because you had less cards to use. With one ofs for sure. Yeah, yeah. with lots of one ofs. It, yeah. it was a dumb, dumb play, but I'm very impressed in what they did here. I think this is the right way to go forward. Give the player all the cards they need uh, for that little extra cost. I think it's worth it. Um, one bad thing was no player reference cards included here, but they put them in the no in the darkness of dark of Mirkwood pack. They included two reference cards, not even four. So I don't know what what the deal was there, why they didn't give you two or four of them in this set. But it, by the time you actually 
buy that scenario pack. You don't need reference cards anymore because you've already played a bunch with your core set. You kind of know the game. You're out buying new stuff. So that was kind of a big dumb dumb mistake. So hopefully in future printings of the Survive core set, or maybe online, they offer players the nice little reference cards um, that come with that expansion, little two-sided reference cards. It would be nice to have four of these to pass around the table if you're playing four players. That's a kind of a miss. Uh, I, I think it was kind of dumb not to include that. Uh, so I have to mention that there. That's just, I hope something that improves there. So you can find references online, or if you buy that that uh, Dark of Mirkwood pack, it comes with reference cards. So you might want to purchase that when you get your revised core set, just so you have reference cards uh, to help you. Or if you have a new player at the table, it's nice to just throw one at them. Um, campaign mode. Adding to the red pill ability. Mel, what are your thoughts on the campaign mode? The, the, campaign the, the big new <laughs> elephant in the room, the new stuff in the core set, the thing I wanted to spend money to buy cards I already owned to buy a second core set. What, tell me about the campaign mode. I really enjoyed the campaign mode. I thought it worked well, at least for the first three scenarios. Um, we haven't played the two in yep, the- Yeah, we're just talking about revised just core Just the revised core yep. set. So I think it, um, it worked well all the way through so far. Um, the boons and the scars are really interesting and I think they add an uh, interesting balance to the game. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, I like the boons. It's, it's really simple. It feels kind of like on the level of Marvel Champions uh, campaigns, which I always say are kind of like lame. They don't really add too much. But that simplicity is kind of nice, actually. I never played the Saga boxes yet in Lord of the Rings. I own them all, but I never got to play them, so I never experienced campaign mode back in the day. So this is my first time experiencing campaign mode in Lord of the Rings. And as what you expect, it feels kind of a little dated, very simple, but I appreciate it being there more than not being there. It adds replayability, so if you're playing the game, you can play standalone on the scenarios, you can play easy, you can play hard, you can play now campaign mode, you can play expert campaign mode, get real serious with it. It just gives you more reasons to play with your core set cards before you move on to expansions to make that core set feel like a more complete game for your money. Much appreciated. Uh, but it, it's a win. Like, I, I'd rather have it than not, and I think they did a good job with it. It definitely helps smooth the curve of difficulty between them. But again, it could go really bad for you, and you get some scars which affect your characters going into the next scenarios, which could have made the scenarios harder uh, if you didn't get the boons, you know? So it's a nice little balance, a little fun thing playing through it again, trying to see if you can get all the boons and that kind of stuff. It's a nice way to tie all three scenarios together. Yeah, and the story connects. It's, it's yeah. cool. It, it should have been like that from the start. Mm -hmm. I hope they do that with the future boxes when they re-release um, uh, cycles. I would love it if they went back and started adding campaign modes like this, even if there are just a few cards, a few boons, a few scars, and some campaign cards to change the setup a little bit. I'll take it. I'll take it. I hope they do that and keep it going. That'd be nice. It's very simple, but it's very nice, yeah. Uh, so this feels like a more complete product, right? Definitely. Okay, just, yeah, definitely a more complete definitely. product. It is a little more expensive than the original core set, but the extra cards, the card storage, the tokens, uh, the campaign mode, the better learn to play, the better rules reference. Um, yeah, uh, it's, it's just, it's worth the money. It, it's definitely feels more complete. I'd rather pay more for this one. Um, but again, if you're trying to try the game out the cheapest way, find an older core set from the first printing, and just dabble, but then again, you're gonna to wanna to buy more of them, you're not gonna have enough cards. So if you think you might like this game, just get the revised core set. It might be the only thing you can really find at the point of watching this video, who knows? Um, thoughts on the scenarios? The difficulty of the game? I, I don't know. Obviously the first one was easy, second, second one was medium difficulty, third one's really hard. Um, they're still that way after, yeah. after not playing the game for six or seven years compared to the first one. It's roughly the same. The campaign mode kind of tweaks it a little bit, um, but it's still challenging. You can put it on easy mode to help with that. You can put it on expert and go crazy with it in the campaign uh, to play with the difficulty. Um, but the scenarios, I think they're fun. Yeah, they're definitely not something or not a game that you'd play blind. This is, uh, there is. Uh, no, you can play it you blind. Can, That's but part of the game. There's yeah. a benefit of knowing the treacheries yeah. that are coming out, the things that you need to cancel if possible, the shadow cards that are gonna, you're going to run into. It's helpful to know that information ahead yeah. of time. And we can touch on that when we talk about replayability a little bit. Uh, does the game still hold up after ten years, Mel? We got into this game like <laughs> nine or ten years ago, and it was still new. Uh, we took a break, played it for a bunch of years with friends, took a break for like six or seven years, got into other LCGs, other games, life, you know, and here we are full circle, we, we're back again. Uh, how does it hold up against Arkham LCG, Marvel LCG? Does it still feel like it holds up with those or would you kind of like always want to go play those? Does this feel different enough? Uh, or would you recommend like Arkham to somebody or Marvel instead? And, and it, you know, it, it does it hold up. Does it hold up? Does it still feel like an, a modern tabletop game you're having fun with it? Or would you rather just play one of the new shinier ones? 
Uh, Based on the revised yeah. core set. <laughs> obviously, this game expanded for 10 full years of tons of content and obviously probably grows and gets pretty crazy and catches up with some of those games. It probably gets pretty awesome, but we're just talking revised core set today. Do you feel like this little box of cards and tokens uh, holds up as a, a, a fun little board game you, you play today, or does it feel old and boring and like, why are we even playing this again? We moved past this. What do you think? Uh, short answer is yes, I think it still holds up. I am super excited to continue playing. I can't even believe when we looked at, we played Scenario 1, it was less than a week ago. Yeah, yeah. It feels like it was yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Right? And we played a few practice in between, and yeah, I am still very excited to explore more of this game. Yeah, I think it still holds up. There's a few things that are a little rough, like the mulligan rule, like I've complained about before. It feels a little archaic, a little, a little harsh. The only draw one card per turn. That's not something rare in the LCGs mm -hmm. and that, but just playing some cards, games, some card games in the future where you're just like discarding at the end of turn, some deck builders where you just get to draw up a whole mitt full of cards new discovery, new puzzles in your hand every turn. Uh, this game still has that archaic, like drawing one card a turn. Otherwise, you have to start putting card draw in your deck or in a player's deck at the table to hope to get draw going. Uh, but it is a game where you're kind of behind and you're trying to, you know, beat the, e the evil. It's not as harsh as Arkham Horror, but the theme is kind of still a little like, you know, you're the big underdog and everything's against you kind of idea. So I understand like why resources aren't plentiful. But it's still just in gameplay wise, we play so many games where you're just drawing tons of cards, seeing new things, discarding on the fly as you need, discarding at the end of turn cards you don't want to hold, like Marvel Champions, dual use cards, all that kind of stuff. This just doesn't have any of that new stuff I like in games where just lots of draw, dual use cards, tons of new things every turn, a new puzzle in your hand. Um, this just doesn't really have that. But it's still fun. It just feels dated. But one thing it does have, though, is it can have those epic draw moments when you're only drawing yes. one card and you draw into that card you needed at that moment. True. It feels so nice. And, and that also reminds me, I did want to say that also when you do draw at all during the turn, like Berivor gives you a couple cards. When you draw those cards, you feel like you are cheating. You feel yeah. like this is amazing. I'm <laughs> getting cards. Sometimes they're cards you can't play because they're unique. You already have a card in play of that one. Or it's not the card you need at the time, which kind of hurts, especially when you're only drawing one card. That also can hurt. So the one card per turn leads to like kind of more disappointment too when you only draw that one and it's not the one you need and it's kind of useless. That's true. That really makes the game suck. Arkham has that too where mm -hmm. I get really frustrated when we don't have card draw going. Um, but that can be fixed by certain cards in the deck or by expanding your card pool and having other cards that you're in your deck to help with the draw. Um, but it just sucks in the revised course that there's not much of that. So you got to make it work. Uh, is the game still great? Yes, it is. Yes. It holds up. Compared to Arkham and Marvel, it's its own thing. Yes, it has the same DNA, feels similar, has a lot of similar aspects, but it has the Lord of the Ring theme, it, that cooperative feels there, the fellowship working together, the, you know, dealing against the, the big bad Sauron, all that kind of his armies and everything. That's all there. Um, but the differences are there is a heavy emphasis on deck building in this game. So you have to be down with deck building or net decking like I do and tweaking or having people build your decks and that kind of stuff for every scenario almost. Like we tweaked our deck between every single scenario and this game is kind of built with that design in mind. I feel like more heavily than some of the other LCGs are. Yeah. yeah. I remember playing cycles back in the day, you're going through them and you have to like really change your deck, change your heroes, throw cards out, put cards in because you'll just lose if you don't. Um, this kind of has that a little bit in the core set, but it's not as bad, but it eventually gets there. But it still has that. So if you're into deck building, if you're into the the, I call it the um, trial and error replayability, where you like play blind, you fail, you see what happened, you go back to the drawing board, rebuild your deck later, come back the next night, try again. Oh, this enemy showed up. I didn't see him last time. I don't have anything to deal with him. I need to mulligan for that next time, or I need to tweak my deck to handle this, or get a different hero, build my deck different, try a whole different deck, have my buddy come over, play two player instead, whatever. That happens in this game a lot, I feel. Uh, so if that is not for you, you might want to stay away. But if you love deck building, you love that challenge, you love replaying the same scenario over and over again, this might be for you. Plus this has a score keeping mode, which could add to replayability. If you like keeping score at the end to see how it does, you can play scenarios over and over again and add your score and compare your score. Solo, multiplayer, however you want to do it. There are sheets to record it. There are web apps to record it, um, which is kind of cool. I don't really do the score keeping stuff anymore. We used to. We used to, yeah. But I, I just stopped caring. I just like the winning, moving on, playing other games, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, 
So yeah, we already talked about it. We had fun with it. Yes. Uh, we definitely had fun with it. This was fun. And now the question is, do we want to keep playing and or expanding our card pool to keep playing this game here in 2022 with this old game from 10 years ago? I, I say yes. I say yes. I definitely, we're going to finish this campaign playing the next two from that expansion pack. Um, but I do have cards for the first few years of the game. I want to get into those. I want to play them. I want to continue playing them on the channel. I'm so glad to get this back to the table. I have the Saga boxes. We can play more campaigns through The Hobbit, through The Lord of the Rings um, stories. Uh, I'm looking forward to more. If you guys want to see more, hit that like button. Uh, let me know in the comments. You know where to start where to go next what your favorite cycles are and all that stuff i'm curious because i want to keep playing so yeah um so you had fun with it you want to keep did. playing yes i definitely do want to keep playing yes. any, any final thoughts mel uh, on this course that someone's asked you about it you know any any notes anything you'd say good bad what um, your thoughts are after playing first thing comes to mind after that you know playing through the campaign uh, first thing that comes to mind is I had so much fun playing this campaign. It brought back all of the memories of playing 10 years ago. Yes. It was so much fun. I cannot wait to keep going. <laughs> so I guess that's my final thoughts. I'm so excited to keep playing. Yeah. yeah. There's a bit of nostalgia. This was one of the games yeah. we got into when we first got into modern board gaming. Uh, this was like our second LCG after Game of Thrones, the LCG. We played competitively. This was a fun one. We could get together, use the same kind of skills and learning of the hobby, playing LCGs, buying packs. But we played cooperatively. I also played a little bit solo. This is the first game I ever tried playing solo board gaming with like nine-ish years ago. And then I didn't play solo for like many, many years. Um, but yeah, I love it. Still holds up. I still would recommend trying it. You know, you can watch our playthroughs. Again, link down below if you want to see how the game flows, how it works. Go watch episode one of us playing through this revised course set, can't, so course set campaign where we explain uh everything that kind of goes on uh in the game how it works and kind of see us go through a few turns and understand there are some how to play videos out there again the game's been around for 10 years there's lots of articles for new players facebook groups reddits all this stuff everyone's pretty new player friendly they're welcoming right now especially uh as people are coming to the game after a game's been shrinking new revised course that means the game's going to start growing again players are going to get in ffg is going to start re-releasing content in new packaging in best of boxes so it's a good time to get into the game um i definitely think it's a good buy one of the best lord of the ring games I i've ever played one of the best card games i've ever played one of the best cooperative games i've ever played i love card games i love the puzzle this game has um and again the only downside to me is is i'm not a huge deck builder but ringsdb.com there's amazing bright genius minds out there building awesome decks thematic decks decks with small card pools big card pools all out there published ready for you to copy and just get into playing this awesome game so don't let the deck building deter you there's there's pre-built decks listed in the rule book to get the game to the table and start playing um and then give it a try worst case sell the core set after and move on don't buy expansions do not buy expansions for this game until you've played the three scenarios in this core set to get a good taste of what this game has to offer on the easy all the way to the hard end um and give you a good taste of all the mechanics and all the challenges that could be out there so I think it's great. Anyways, thanks a lot for watching, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.